Okay, so carried on from the ISD saltwater cap, uh, I've drawn another picture here, and this is uh, from the saltwater cap. So this is the first part of my device after the energy source. Um, this is my IST Freakcon, and this is a low volt model. This operates uh, anywhere from half a volt, three quarters of a volt to uh, about 60 volts. So it's very wide range. Um, this particular unit is going to operate 12 volts down to one volt in that range, half a volt. Um, there's only two transistors in this basic model um, and the circuit is really basic it is uh, shared on line all over the place um, I'll actually at some point add the schematic and the links and the videos that explain doing this um, I was not the originator of this circuit I'm simply using it uh, it's a great circuit um, however, I am the, the originator of this toroid, uh, this coil design, and everything else. That circuit I'm not. I have lots of circuits I can replace it with, but I like that circuit. And the gentleman that made it is very smart. He did a, a wonderful job in his presentation of the circuit and ex explanation and, and showing how it's done. And uh, for that, I'm going to use his circuit. And congrats, sir. Um, this is basically a it's basically a jewel thief, but it's it's a more advanced jewel thief. It's not your average jewel thief. I can make modifications to it and improve it, but I see no reason to do that. Um, being that we're working on the salt water battery and the energy is is really very cost effective, so. You can see I'm using a TV yoke core. We'll zoom out on the entire schematic here so you can get a, get a drawing. It's, it's a, not a schematic of the circuit because the circuit's available everywhere. If you look around, you'll find it. This is a drawing of my transformer I build out of a TV yoke core. And this is a two-part core where the core splits in half. And you can see I've drawn that in there. I'm no artist, but uh, there you go. That's what I'm going to use for the core because everybody can get them. Uh, old monitors, old TVs, 90% of them are the split core ones. I have a few that are single core which make it a real treat to wind. But with the split core it's very easy. So, we'll go through and explain this and how it's uh, designed and how it's wound and the principle of operation of this device. And basically you see here's the split core here and I have four generator windings uh, you could call them generators you can call them transformers and you can call them resonant transformers as well as rotating transformers because in essence that's what happens here um, I've taken here are my power coils so like I said the circuit here if you follow this fellow's work he's taken an AC transformer center tapped and he has uh, put put it into a high frequency loop where it just keeps it gets running real quick and you use some resistance to set the the value of the coils because you want to pretty much get them ringing with the highest voltage that you can for the core material that you have used and uh, there you go so these here should all be the same um, these are my pulse coils. It's basically like a pulse motor without any motion. So you have, um, or a jewel thief, same deal. Split core here so that I can easily wind my generator cores because those are going to be high turn count. So I'll split this in half, which is nice, and then I can wind either side. Or I can make a bobbin and wind that and then just slide it on and slide it on and wind four of them the same. These are my pulse coils. So. Uh, these get connected together like an AC transformer, center tapped. I basically, uh, in the Jewel Thief, this is a, a bifiller winding, except what we've done is we've split the core so that it goes on half. So, in essence, you have a, a Jewel Thief. This is a better circuit, though. Um, you have uh, 
two electromagnetics, two, two electromagnets that produce electromagnetic fields in the ferrite core. Now, the direction of winding on this is this way, and then this one follows on the same. So this is the start, this is the end. Okay, And those two get connected together, as you can see, I've drawn them in here. It jumps all the way around. They get connected to the positive side of the controller. And the other two, one and three, get connected here to the other ends of the coils. Now, these send negative pulses out of phase of one another, back and forth. Tick -tick 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 -tick. Makes it race and race and race and race. But we're making a, nor a south field here and a north field here, and the same here. So, the one field is circulating this direction, getting uh, speeded up by that. So it's going like this, and the other field is going like this. So, this coil grabs one field, this coil grabs the other field. This coil here, we only send a single pulse into it, but it produces two fields. It produces a south field and a north field. And the same with this coil, a south field and a north field. So, that's how that works. Um, and they just race around inside the ring. Now, I have advancements to this because I've wound so many darn coils, I have so many advancements. And I chose to draw on this diagram an optional, it's labeled OPT, period, optional, um, magnets. That says magnets. Uh, basically where the core splits here, you can section that and you can put magnets in there. You can put them north or south, you can put one in there each way or you can put them and force them together in bucking configuration. There are a number of ways you can manipulate the magnetic fields of the magnets into the ferrite and grab a little extra, especially in a bucking configuration. Uh, you can uh, apply energy here and here so that these two fields are the same and they push together. And if I applied two south fields in the center and these were north fields here, north pushes this way and north this way, and south is at the center, very center line, so I have a north magnet and a north magnet. Every time I energize this, it's going to compress that field into the south. It's going to push from both sides and push. And then when I release it, all that energy is going to fly back out. And it's going to fly out these coils, and it's going to fly out these ones. These ones become output. So if you don't take off of the primaries, which I have said the entire time in the Jewel Thief, you're going to force it out the secondaries. So I have four secondaries. This is just basically a voltage step-up converter. Um, it's capable of handling some amperage though. Uh, it's not just uh, a weak voltage. This is a fair bit uh, with amperage behind it. So my salt water cell which supplies this is capable of uh, producing some amperage behind it. Uh, the salt water cell is basically determined by the surface area of the materials you've used. So I'm going to use fairly large plates so I can accumulate a fairly decent amount of amperage. I'd like to get one or two amps at uh, anywhere from 1 volt to 50 volts from a salt water cell. Whatever I design the cell for. Um, the lower the voltage I find the better because uh, you're going to have less problems. It's not going to blow transistors and all those good things up on you. Again, just very basic. This is the first. This is the first electrical device in my system, and this just basically uh, is going to go along and power the IST Mini power stack. But this is the power source for my pulse motor, and when my pulse motor is full, this becomes the recharger for my 12 volt battery. Um, aside the solar and aside the feedback from the motor, this is just an additional recharge because I can. Okay, well thanks a lot for watching.